The AWS Solutions Architect Associate, or the path from associate to professional, is, is one of the best certifications and paths that you can take right now in IT. And it's a way to really open doors and make quite a bit of money while doing it. But it's also a pretty difficult exam for the Solutions Architect Associate. It's not like easy. I mean, if you've had a lot of time with AWS and you spend, you know, maybe two, three weeks studying, then it's fine. It's not like super hard, but it's not easy, right? And there's a ton of knowledge to know for it. And while it may not be like super down in the weeds like the developer, um, it's still a lot to know. Listen, I'm Jeff, the IT guy, and I am certified. Um, and this video is to help you prepare for that certification. So these are the things that I've learned um, through my career working with AWS, being a director of IT, as well as being certified. And so I want to pass uh, these tips on to you. So there's five tips. Don't forget to stick around to the end. There's gonna be a bonus tip, right? And so, like I said, this video is to help you pass on the first time. And so the AWS Solutions Architect exam is broken into four domains, right? You've got design re resilient architecture, design high performing architecture, design secure applications and architectures, and then cost optimized architectures. And they're broken down to a percentage of the exam, these four domains. And so um, the domain one, which is the design resilient architecture is 30% of the exam. Design high performing architectures, 28. Design secure applications and architectures is 24. And then design cost optimized architectures is 18. And that gives you 100% total. And so on this grant, um, exam and you can look at the diagram I put it up here it's almost equal almost into what each part plays into it and so unlike the um, developer associate you can't really just hope that you can hammer down on like three out of the four or for in the case of the developer it's three out of five domains and hope that you can pass like with this you really be, have to be good in all four of the domains or you won't pass right and so you know, you need to know quite a bit about each domain. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first tip is to know S3. S3, which is, you know, uh, the simple storage service on Amazon. Uh, this is a key service and a key exam question uh, for the Solutions Architect Associate exam. You need to know pretty much everything about S3. So you need to know the tiers. You need to know the retrieval times for each tiers. You need to know the re reliability for each of those tiers. You need to know which one's more cost effective. You need to know how to make a static website. You need to know how S3 is encrypted. And so knowing S3 and knowing it well is going to help you across all four of, those, of these domains. So you need to know S3, like the back of your hand. It is super, super, super important. There are a ton of S3 questions. And so tip number two, you need to understand scaling and performance. So you need to be familiar with scaling, whether that's horizontal or vertically, right? So you need to know if you're going to scale up, which is how you take, say for example, an EC2 instance, if you scale vertically, you're going to increase the resources that that one instance has. If you're scaling horizontally, you're gonna add more instances to that. So you're, instead of increasing the resources that an instance has, you throw more instance at it. So that's horizontal versus vertical um, scaling. So you need to know the difference between those two. You need to know how those will work and when to use those. You need to know how, um, you know, what, how much RAM and CPU you need to know. You, need, uh, you also need to understand how multi-availability zones work. You need to know about uh, the auto scaling. And you also need to know how to keep the cost down when designing these solutions that require uh, scaling. Right, so tip number three, be able to create a VPC from scratch. So your virtual private connection, right? You need to know how to create this from scratch. This is key to this exam. If you can create a, VP from scratch, a VPC from scratch, you will probably pass this exam. And so there's a lot that goes into it, but that still shows just how well you understand a lot of the fundamental services of AWS. And so you need to know how to create it from scratch. You need to know how to add security groups. You need to know how to pass through internet um, to a private security group. Like you need to know about bastions and NATs. Um, you need to know how all of that works, how you can keep one security group private, but pass data to it. 
uh, via the internet so that you can do updates and stuff like that on EC2. Um, you need to know how, for example, um, how you can have a private security group with, say, a database, but a public security group with a web-facing EC2 instance. You need to know how you can pass data between those two. Um, like, you just need to really understand this part of the networking. It's very important. So you need to understand how VPCs work. It's important that you can go in and create one of these from scratch. So when you're practicing for this exam, go ahead and see if you can create a VP VPC from scratch and add like a NAT to it, maybe a Bastion, whatever, a private security group, um, a not private security group, etc. cetera. Um, so know it, practice it, and this right here will ensure your success on this exam. And so tip number four is know your security. And so understanding security in this exam really is a must. You'll get asked quite a few questions about IAM, security groups, VPCs, roles, etc. Right? You're going to need to know a security because it's going to help you across all uh, across three of the domains. Um, you know, it can be the difference between passing and not passing the exam, right? And so you need to be sure that you understand roles, ARNs. You need to know how to grant access based upon roles or IAM um, groups. You also need to know the JSON that goes into some, some creating the permissions policies. And so it may be you'll get asked a question like you've got this ARN, which is an Amazon resource uh, name or number, whichever one it is. I just call it ARN. You, you have this ARN and you want to grant it access to say S3 and you'll get some like boilerplate JSON. Um, you need to know how to go in and like how to choose which of the multiple choice questions is correct. And so you need to know um, how to grant permissions with using JSON. Okay, and so this, you also need to understand KMS, which is the key management service. Um, you need to understand like cloud HSM and, and things of that nature. It's really important also that you understand um, how the keys work. So if you have like a data key, you need to know which key encrypts what, how it's encrypted, things of that nature. And so tip number five is that you need to understand the big seven. And the big seven is what I'm classifying as the big seven AWS services that you're going to get asked about on this exam or that is really important to be able to create um, architectures and applications inside of Amazon. And so the big seven, like I said, these, these are the big seven services and this is actually excluding S3 um, because that's something you should know already. And so this is going to include EC2, right? Um, Elastic File System, Elastic Load Balancer, RDS, Relational Database uh, Systems, DynamoDB, Elasticache, Crowd, CloudFront, right? And then, of course, S3. And these services are really the main services plus S3 that you're going to get asked about uh, in most cases. And we'll put that in like asterisks, most cases, okay? And you need to understand how each of these services work and how they work together, right? So you need to know how... Say, for example, you get an EC2 instance and you want to connect it to S3 using a role, but you also need to add Elastic File System to it. And you need to understand what the types of file systems are. You need to know how to make them persist, how to make them not persist. Um, you know, encryption, you need to understand how to encrypt, um, you know, like an EBS volume, etc. You also need to understand how you're going to work with RDS. So let's say you're going to use um, Amazon Aurora with an EC2 instance. You need to know how to grant access to that and everything. You need to understand what Elasticache is, um, like Redis or Memcached, so that you can design um, scaling with your databases. You need to understand rewrite replicas when it comes to RDS and DynamoDB. And of course, you need to understand CloudFront and how you can cache um, images and data and stuff like that in the cloud and for, you know, different parts of the globe, etc. These are there's a lot to know on this exam. These, however, are like the big seven plus S3. Right. And so this is what you really you need to know at least these to be able to pass this exam. And so time it's time for a bonus tip, right? This is a, a bonus bonus or like just a, a bonus tip, right? So be prepared to get asked about some of the fringe services. And what I mean by fringe is like kind of services that you probably wouldn't use in a solutions um, architect associate role um, because they're more high level, but have a high, under, a high level understanding of services like Kinesis, 
So you need to understand like Kinesis Streams, Kinesis Firehose, etc. Understand how Amazon's VPN works, um, Direct Connect, etc. So there's going to be a lot of services that you have, need to have a high level understanding of. And these services, like I said, there may not be um, services that you spend a lot of time on, but be ready. You're going to get asked a few questions about these services, especially when it comes to like VPN, Direct Connect, things of that nature, and Kinesis. Bonus, bonus tip, right? Read the white papers. Read the white papers for S3, the big seven that I talked about, security, VPCs. Be ready, right? Read these white, white papers. They're not, you know... They're not super long, but there's a lot of really good information in those. And so also read the white papers on building cost optimized cloud solutions, as well as a well-architected cloud framework. Read those two as well. They're really going to help you. And so, you know, I hope these tips, they help you. And I hope to see, you know, that there's a lot of people adding badges to their LinkedIn. You know, there's an AWS LinkedIn um, group and stuff. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more AWS tips, guides, etc., as well as other nerdy tech content that we do here on the channel. Um, I really appreciate when y'all subscribe and leave a comment and stuff. Uh, let me know if you pass this exam. Let me know if you think these tips help. Um, if you have tips of your own that you'd like to share with the community and stuff. Also, um, down in the description, there's going to be some courses um, for like, you know, the AWS Solutions Architect, as well as like the Developer Associate, maybe the Sys Admin Associate as well. Those are going to be down in the description. Um, go ahead, if you're interested in taking this exam, these courses are the ones that I used whenever I was preparing to get my certifications. So I highly, highly recommend them. They're linked down below. Uh, go ahead, you know, buy like 5,000 of them. Um, it does help the channel a little bit. So... You don't have to buy 5,000 of them, of course, but it, they really do help. They're really great courses. I wouldn't recommend them if they weren't. So go ahead, subscribe, have a great day, and as always, keep it